Hello students and welcome to the next lesson in our AS Level Economics course. Today we're going to be looking at production possibility diagrams. What is a production possibility diagram? The combination of goods and services by an economy that which are produced can be displayed on something we call a production possibility diagram. The correct definition of the term is a diagram showing all possible combinations of goods that are produced by an economy when all factors of production are being used efficiently. Now this is also synonymous with a production possibility frontier or production possibility curve, so however you've been taught it, it's all the same. What do they show? They can show an opportunity cost, trade-offs, changes in the standard of living, and the use or underuse of factors in production. Here we're going to show you now how a production possibility diagram is going to show each one of these features. So here we have our production possibility diagram. As you can see, it's a set of axes and each one of the axes is labeled as socks and shoes. So what this diagram is pretty much going to show is how many socks and shoes an economy can pretty produce at one point in time. So we're going to have to see how to draw a production possibility diagram. And it's simple. What we draw is one line which connects the socks and the shoes together. This is what's known as our production possibility frontier and it's the maximum amount of goods that this economy can produce. So this means, if we are working around here, it means that we're producing this many socks and this many shoes. So at this point in time, we are producing quite a few socks, but not as many shoes. Okay, however, we can produce a point which is about here. Now we're producing quite a few socks, and very few shoes. Now you probably notice that this is actually inside the production possibility frontier and this is actually possible. We can actually produce points anywhere here but the maximum that we can produce them to is the frontier itself. So the frontier you can't pass but you can actually shift it but we're going to look at that later in the video. So what do production possibility diagrams actually show? Well they show four main things that we've just gone through being opportunity costs, changes in the standard of living, trade-offs and the use of economic resources. So first we're going to have a look at how opportunity costs are shown. Now first we're going to have a random point on our production possibility diagram that we're going to be producing. So at this moment in time we're producing this many shoes and this many socks. We're producing quite a few shoes, we're actually pretty much um, at the limit of how many shoes we can produce, but we're producing a lot fewer of the socks. So what we can do is find another point on our diagram that we're going to be producing from and see if we were to sh change the point here, move it along, we're producing a lot more socks, however we're producing much less shoes. So this distance, pretty much the change in both of these points, indicates the opportunity cost. The opportunity cost is the value of what has been given up to produce something else. So we have given up this many shoes in order to produce this many more socks. Simple. Okay, another thing that production possibility diagrams are uh, shown to do is indicate trade-offs and this is something which is pretty much exactly the same as the opportunity cost. A trade-off is pretty much the action of the opportunity cost. So we're going to stick to our two points. If we were to change what we will call point A to point B, the action of changing from point A to point B is called a trade-off. Okay, also we're going to have a look at the use of economic resources. And this pretty much refers to how well we're using our production possibility diagram. So if we're producing on the frontier of our production possibility diagram, we are using all the economic resources possible because we are at what we call maximum efficiency. However, if we begin to produce our goods over here, we can see that we actually aren't at maximum efficiency because there's a huge gap that we can potentially reach until we go to the production possibility frontier. So in this instance, if we're operating at point A rather than point B, we can say that there's an underuse of economic resources. However, if we then shift point A to point B, we're going to be using the maximum amount of economic resources available to us. So as a result, 
we are using everything in our potential and we're using at maximum efficiency. Now another thing that uh, we can do to our diagram is show the changes to the standards of living. And what this does, it shows how we can shift the possibility uh, frontier. So what this means, if we were to change our standards of living, we could actually shift the frontier to make it even bigger. So now that we've changed the way we live, we're more efficient, we use more technology, we can actually find a point on our, um, on our graph which shows that we're actually producing more than we were before. So it's clear to see that we're producing even more socks and if this, let's say, this point here let me just redraw this. If this point here was down there, this point here was over here, it would be clear that we're producing even more socks and even more shoes. This is because we have shifted the frontier. So as a result, the changes in standard of livings allow us to produce even more of these two goods. Here you have some questions. What I would like you to do is have a go at attempting these on a separate sheet of paper once you then pause the video and hit play to check out the answers. Here are the answers. If you did get all four of them right, congratulations. I would advise you to move on to the next video. However, if you did not, be sure to go over your answers once more and try and correct them by checking over your notes or rewinding the video. You can also revise from www.revisealevel.co.uk where there is a lot more information on AS level economics and other subjects as well. Join us next time where we're going to be looking at the positive and normative economics. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to help you again soon. Until then.